Hi, my name is Jacob Adams. Hi. Uh, and this is Maria. Yes. Uh, I'm a leadership coach. And Maria, what do you, what do you do? What's kind of what do you want to tell the people a little bit about yourself that you do? Um, actually, I'm starting my first year as a teacher in August, so currently I'm just prepping for that. Awesome! Right on! Right on! Uh, you know, Maria, one of the things we were talking about earlier this week is we talked about how you know what when is it that how first uh, first question is how does someone start a relationship? What is your advice on how to start a relationship? <laughs> I'm sorry, my advice. I don't have much of advice on how to start one since I'm not really a jumping into relationship kind of girl. I think the last relationship I was in was last summer and it didn't last that long. Well, you know, the thing is that we, more specifically, what, okay, let me backtrack a little bit here, okay? So let's just say somebody's dating you, right? What would be a good way to get, what, what is a proper date? Let's say that. What's, what, what is a proper date? Yeah, I like that question. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I was leading to, but here we are. This is, <laughs> we have no script, by the way, guys. We just have a little bit of guideline. We just ate a little bit, and we're right in front of the camera, hanging out, so there's no script here. Okay. What's a proper date to you? I think a proper date is first, ask her. Don't do it so much through text because I find like that's kind of awkward and not so real, if that makes sense. So phone call, hit her up, hey, um, I'm thinking of this, want to go to the movies, want to catch dinner, want to, let's just hang out and talk. Um, I'm all for that. I feel like that really consists of a date. Somewhere where you can kind of get to know each other. So if you're doing a movie, great, but try to do something either before or after to where you can kind of like converse and get to know them because that's the whole point of dating. Sorry. Very cool, very cool. And so that, I like the tip that you said call. Now do you think that's more like a personality thing? Because I know there's some women that like really just love primarily texting. Really? What about you? Is that primarily, is that, do you think you're pretty much, a lot of women would prefer the call or is that just something that you're saying so? For me, I feel like it's more personal, a little more, if he can call me rather than just text me, then I'm going to give him a shot because I feel like it's more, you're putting yourself more out there with the call as opposed just to a text. It's more easy and I guess it's more vulnerable with the call and that's what I like about it that he is putting himself out there. Okay, and what's an example? So I like what you said. You said, hey, you know, invite somewhere, take the f time to call. Um, what's in the, and go somewhere where you could talk, maybe if your movie set some time afterwards, like a coffee shop or whatever, yeah. uh, restaurant. Now that said, you know, what's an example of a bad date? Awkward silence. Where would somebody invite you that you don't think is a good date? <laughs> I don't think it's a good date. Like, what do you? What's one of the worst places you've been invited to? On a date. For a date. I don't think I've ever been invited. I usually get the, you know, the movie or the dinner or the coffee shop, but I feel like on a first date, don't invite me over to your house, especially when you live with your parents, because that gets awkward really fast. And has that ever happened? No, thank gosh. <laughs> Cool. And so let's just say, what would be what would be a good time that somebody is actually achieving progress? Or you can say these dates are going. What are some signs that you can tell our viewers to look for that? Hey, the dates are going good. Okay, definitely when you don't have that awkward silence where you know you're, there's that conversation and you guys are discussing your interests and your hobbies, and you just have that common interest kind of. But also when you have those differences and you're learning more about each other because of them. Um, also, I feel like laughter is always a good sign. If he can make you laugh or she can make you laugh, then you're definitely going somewhere with that. Uh, Those are pretty good answers. Those are pretty good answers. And, and when is it going not good? What are some signs that it's like this person hits you up and it's not going good? Um, maybe when he doesn't hit you up again, that's a clear sign that it's not going so good. I mean, like for him, like that you, you think oh, okay. that you would say, hey, it didn't work out. You know, you're, there's no chemistry. When is when? What can he see as like? Wait a minute. If I take too long to respond to your text, or if you call me and I'm not answering, but I always feel like it's always good, depending on the other person again. Like to be honest and be like, you know what? Like 
all it takes is for me to give them two minutes and be like, it's not working out or it's not going as well as I thought it would. I think personally, it's always best to be honest. Like, don't ignore the guy. Don't, don't ignore the person. Just tell them how you're feeling. And it gets easier for both parties. Cool. I really like it. So to recap, uh, hey, there's laughter going on. There's really good conversation going on. This is this is a good sign. But if she's ignoring you, kind of trying to give you some space or the yeah. cold shoulder, obviously, is that generally it? It's pretty easy. It's yeah. I don't feel like it's that hard. We were watching a comedy show the other day, and Aziz was talking about how some people are like, "Hey, love to hang out with you soon." Yeah. Okay. Cool. Bye. You remember so, yeah. like say so like, what do you think about? modern dating as opposed to in the past how it was in the past you know we could call landline or you know I now feel like it was so much easier back then i feel like now a lot of social media gets involved and even before you go on the first date you're already looking at each other's accounts whether it be facebook or instagram and you're looking at past you know past histories or past relationships maybe there's even stuff on his like facebook or his instagram where he still has pictures with like a past Girl, so I feel like that really. You think you should take him down? I don't know if you. Depending on the time, like how long has it been since you've been dating this girl? Was mm. it a month ago? Was it six months ago? Like, if you still have pictures from a year ago, guys. No. Okay, so let me ask you this. So like, I know I have a picture of one of my exes. Like, I mean, like it's down deep in there. Like, see, and that you can say I know you have it. That's when it becomes an issue because a lot of people are like, oh, I forgot that was up there. And that's why it's primary still up there. I see, and I'm really happy we're talking about this because we didn't had no idea that this was going to be one of the things that come up. And so it's showing you, like, maybe I'm sabotaging myself when in reality it's just that I'm an artist and I just, I'm just collecting memories. You know what I mean? So it's, You can save it to your computer, take it off social media. And that's sort of some advice you're giving to the people, right? Like, in other words, when we put the title on the screen, like, it'll be like, why your social media pictures are fucking with your sex life or some shit like that. <laughs> okay. Right or, or I'll probably put something like that on on the title. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But again, I figure if somebody's willing to look that deep, I mean, we're talking like. No, girls will look that deep. They wow. They will be there all night. I'm sorry, girls, but you know it's true. Wow. Yeah. So so they'll look into everything. They'll look into every little thing, and then if they're not doing it, they have friends who are better at researching. Wow. And they're doing it. So that picture will be seen eventually by one of them. You know, and, and I guess me, at the stage that I'm at in my dating life, I'm, I'm actually fine. Because at the end of the day, everything's, social media is, there, you're never going to take it all off. There's no, some, there's it's, some, there's there, it's almost there. like a thumbprint. Like, it's there, something's going to, they're going to find something. And to me, like, let's say, I, think, I can think of, I have, in my hand, I could probably show you the picture I could think of of my exes. Like, they're three to five. I'm like, to Jacob. And they're zero. And they're zero. And that's good. And that's good. So this is really cool that we have like this little dialogue. Again, no script. Uh, you're really seeing people sort of have differences uh, live. This is a live differences thing. Okay. So, and I think, hey, whatever, it's art, whatever, like, hey, I took it. It's done. My life's going on. Like, in a way, I'm like the most conservative liberal there is. Okay. <laughs> Can you go into that? Why, why? <laughs> Can you go into that? I think I think it's like in other words, I know what you're getting at, but I'm saying well you know I feel like leaving it on there, so I will at the same time knowing that what you have a point like mm -hmm. it could sabotage potential. I think on some levels like if somebody can't take something so simple like a picture that's trivial to me, then they probably wouldn't be able to handle the real me anyway. I think it's just doubts. That's when doubts are playing in. And I want somebody that has a lot of doubts not to get closer to me because doubts are part of the relationship. Like doubts are, you, we all have to face our doubts in order to get closer to people. That's kind of what we're getting next. That's kind of where we're headed to next in this in this video. Okay. Remember we were talking about commitment and then like mm -hmm. this and stuff. So let's just say, okay, let's just say you're okay. hitting it off. When we're is a good time it. to go? Because you've been asked. No, and I wanted to ask you this because I'm currently having issues with this. But when is it that you're not so much dating anymore? Does it naturally, do you feel, turns into a relationship? Or there has to be a point where it's verbally said like... We're in a relationship now. I would say that it's, it depends on the, the couple. And I've it, after all my research, both real dating and real relationships and books and experts, uh, I've talked to psychologists and therapists, the best I could give you is this. The most important thing between two people 
in a monogamous relationship is that they're both on the same page. If you're both on the same page, you're good. Because that is, it doesn't matter, someone can have a title, but if you're not on the same page, then you're, then it doesn't matter what the title says. So what happens when... Is that, is that fair? No, it is fair. What ha- and you just said it like, okay, say we're not on the same page and one feels like, okay, I don't want to be dating anymore. I want this to be a relationship. But the other person's like, no, like I still don't feel like we complete, we're completely there. I think it's a rainbow, um, like a, a spectrum thing at that point. Where let's say someone, I felt that, hey, you know what? I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling it. And I'm ready to just make this exclusive. And I say the girl goes, you know, I'm not quite there. I want to play the field a little more. I have all these guys liking my Instagram photos. I have a nice ass. You know, I like the way they look at me. They talk to me. They send me instant messages. That turns me on. I like to touch myself to that concept. Whatever. She's thinking. Built up really fast. <laughs> I know a lot of people. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yes, so let's just say she says something like that to me. I'd go like this. I get it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, because uh-huh. I mean that's a lot to overcome that temptation. So then I could tell her something like, "I want. I know. I want all of you. I want you to keep that attention. It turns me on to think of that." Or be like, "Well, you know what." I can wait a little bit. You know, it's all, okay. it depends how mature it the people on, are. Yes, okay, that's what you were going to I think a juvenile position would be like this. This is more like an adolescent perspective. <laughs> what? You're not ready? Why? Well, look, if you don't do, com- you know, commit to me, then, then we're not going to be friends no more. Like, this is over. Like that's okay. kind of a juvenile-ish response. And that's something that's re- you don't want to be with, anyways. So because of leverage, there's leveraging, and, and, yeah. but, and it was, in other words, it's I, kind of like manipulation in a way too. Like it, okay, if it's childhood wounds, yeah. childhood wounds. You know what that is? The childhood wounds. Because in other words, like I can't be vulnerable right now. I must can gain power and control because the vulnerability, and that's where S and M kind of, uh, like in a, that that's, that relationship is kind of good for S and M because that relationship there's power struggles. I see how the leveraging and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so usually that's where F- S&M comes in. But if you're a yogi like myself, pure as, pure as snow. Really? <laughs> really? Let's like X that part out because that's not true. You get, it, was, it was a joke. That, that part was a joke. <laughs> um, the, the, the whitest snow part, that was it. But anyway, so I mean, so any thoughts on that before we keep going on the commitment? And ask, we have about... Uh, eight, five minutes or so that usually cuts off it. No, we can move on. Okay, so we kind of understand like so at, at what point the Does ultimately the commitment turn to relationship. So let's just say the the two parties where you've been dating you've been dating multiple and I made a, a video called boundaries dating which explains how to date uh, This video here we're going to the actual process and what happens in once you're at the commitment level right kind of like well, a woman's perspective not just me you know Maria, thanks for showing showing the ones. So it's so sound. It's so simple. It's so, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's super nice. Simple. It's super nice. Um, uh, it's a lot like your ensemble today. Very very well matched. I should have known you. <laughs> so in any case, um, so let's just say the two parties, the, the the man and the woman, or even if you are into men and men or women and women, you know, let's so say the two pe- the two parties are ready to get committed okay how do you were asking how do you go about that Mm -hmm. i say hey i'm sure at that point you could just look into her eyes and be like i want it to just be me and you i mean that's a pretty good sentence that it it does it is verbalized at some point i don't think it's ever not been verbalized okay like right in 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 grade school was like do you want to be do do you want to be my girlfriend and you'd send them a little note and they'd circle yes or no have you ever been asked like that anything (laughs) like that Back in like middle school. So nothing recent. No, I'm not through a note. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so so what is is that fair? How you would say like what in your experience? Yeah, there has to be some sort of agreement. Agreement. I feel like true. Yes. So that way the boundaries can be set and said, and that's kind of where it gets I feel tricky. Like there's also this like additional step where it's dating, and then you're exclusively just dating, and then you're in that relationship. So I feel like. Now with modern dating, we've added that additional step because old school dating, if you were with someone, I feel like that was it. Like you were just dating one person. But now in this modern world we live where, no, like 
if we both agree, then you could be dating two, three women at the same time. I could be dating two, three men at the same time. And then that's when like, you know what, out of all of them, I really like you the best. So let's exclusively date if you're okay with that. Right. That's a common one. That's, that's sort of the general synopsis. And then if you're going to go into the Christian dating, that would be like, okay, well, there's no sex in the dating. That's like a, that's, that, that's what I subscribe to personally myself. And the reason being is that I feel that if there's usually sex involved, especially without a condom, uh, then it, there's too, it's too many emotions get mixed up. And see, I have this one friend. Do you, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I know what you're talking about. And I have this one friend, I'm just going to bring it up because, again, woman perspective, who likes to get that sexual tension out of the way first because they feel like it's kind of like they can't get to know that person because that tension is there. So first they jump into that. Wow. Yes. We must have to make another video. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> okay, look, we have about three minutes. How about okay. we wrap this one up and start another video? Okay. Because this is getting a little too good. Okay, we're going to pick up there. So let's just say there's commitment. So nowadays, what are some good... So in the past, it was sort of like... The way I remember it being in the past, it was like, okay, you know, you start dating. Kind of like what you're saying. Not as many... Not you, People would be players more. It wouldn't be out in the open like I'm dating these people. No. So they would just kind of play and then they'd go right into marriage, have kids. It was more a speedy process to get the people into the house, the kids and I the dog and the white picket sense. Yes. And so now, since we saw our parents go through divorce, we're kind of, all, we're the generation of kids that are like, you know what, adults are like, hey, chill out. You know, we're going to slow it down and no, get yeah, it right. Is so that kind of it? I feel so. I feel like we have more and more, like from our generation that aren't getting married until they're 30 or even 32. And it's perfectly okay now as to before, like you said, people were rushing and getting married by 21 and having the kids by 23 and having the home by 25. And then up. cheating on the yeah, side. So because by the time that they were 35, both were divorced and where were the kids? There you go. So that's so currently today we're trying to, you could say we're at a stage where in the past they were rushing into it, we're trying to refine it and make it more of a sophisticated choice now. Is yes. that kind of that where was, we're at? Yes. Is exactly. that you feel, you think so too? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Right on. That's, that's, that's a great conclusion we both have because again, we didn't pr uh, plan that conclusion. That just sort of organically came out. And so what are some common mistakes? We have about a minute, some common mistakes people might have in the dating world. What are some common mistakes? Just thing comes first. I feel like you date more than me, so you would be better. I think I've dated more than you, but I think we're both kind of in the same so sort of level. So mistakes, give me one and then I'll follow up. I think common mistakes is just not being honest. That's the biggest one. Not being transparent enough. Okay. That's it. You? I feel as though one of common mistake is in dating. I feel like nowadays there's a lot of, oh, well, he waited a day to message me, so I'm going to wait two days to message him The back. game. Yeah, I think it's just playing a game. That's juvenile. Mm-hmm. And even like when you're 27 and 28, 29, 30, and you're still doing it. We're running out of time. Love to see you subscribe. Love to hear what you think. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.